the work in this exhibition is from the last five years, which comes after a career survey. My work has been, you know, early on it was very collage based and works on paper and then it kind of moved into a predominantly digital realm. It's kind of a risk for me to just focus on painting because it's not my medium per se. It's that I want to focus attention without demanding a lot from the audience in terms of like kind of long form, durational, digital presentations. The exhibition brings together works that were made for different contexts and different exhibitions and then two new works that were made specifically for this space but when we were setting it up it was super great to see that there were formal motifs or approaches in the way that I made the paintings that became more evident seeing them all together. My paintings probably have the most dialogue with like Ed Ruscha or this kind of hand-painted pop era but there's also like a really tender attachment that I have to Agnes Martin who is like directly across the room from from the paintings that I made specifically for this show so it is exciting to to see them in this context I've made a lot of works on canvas that involve transcribing other people's writing. And there is this kind of meditative mood that takes over. And I feel that while I'm not the kind of person who could make the kinds of paintings that Agnes Martin makes, I wanted for the museum goer to be able to access the fact that Agnes Martin also was someone who wrote and she wrote about human experience and consciousness and she wasn't just dealing in abstractions, but she was dealing with her spirit and, and the complexity of human emotions. And the simple act of transcribing Agnes Martin's words onto a canvas um, in, you know, in with a pencil, you know, that's gonna sit like across the room from her actual you know, pencil lines is something that reflects on my practice in general. In addition to this Agnes Martin's voice, which is kind of front and center in the exhibition, there's also the voice of Ian Svenonius, who's a kind of countercultural figure who wrote this fantastic essay called Censorship Now. The act of me enlarging and magnifying and amplifying that text was not just a kind of painterly act, it was a way to also draw attention to this sort of discrepancy between the value of kind of painted surfaces and the value of intellectual critique. I had this idea to do a kind of double-sided painting and it was not to be literally so, so it wouldn't be like, oh, you just look at the painting from that's like hung in the middle of the room. No, this is like one painting would be on this side of the wall and the other would be on this side of the wall and they would just be two different views. The painting that in, in the show here is from a cell in an original Nancy comic strip. And I just was so taken aback by this image, I had to paint it, but how did I make it mine? So you see Nancy's looking into his window and she's looking at his kind of messed up house. What is on the other side of Nancy or where she's looking is this kind of, this is what wasn't Bushmiller and this is what I created with this sort of Edenic nature. And instead of saying whatever she originally said, she's saying, behold man, which is a phrase that appears throughout my work. It's not about saying like, behold man, what a slob. That's not the intention. That image is compelling to me because it speaks to a kind of disintegration of material reality and a, and a kind of and the kind of stuff that we are surrounded with.
The sculptor Charles Ray, who I worked for a long time ago, for a short time, he was giving a lecture uh, a couple of years ago, I saw him, and he was talking about uh, Greek Kuros sculpture. And he was saying, you know, we don't know who made this, and we're not really even sure why they made this, but we know this is a meaning machine. And when they made it, they turned it on. And it never got turned on. And I feel like this, the human capacity to emit these little meaning machines that don't need updated software <laughs> is pretty remarkable. And our desire to engage that thing, to explore the meaning, is what makes us human.